Welcome to the screencast on set builder notation. So let's have a look at a set that's a little different than one you've seen before. We're going to look at uh, the set M of all motion pictures ever made and focus on this subset of M right here. Here's a, a subset of the set of all motion pictures ever made and we're going to list this in roster notation. Star Wars, Blade Runner, Indiana Jones, The Fugitive, Cowboys and Aliens, dot dot dot. Now normally we put the dot 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 there to indicate a pattern is taking shape and we want to continue that pattern. It may not be totally obvious to you what that pattern is in this case. That's my question. So think about this for a second and test your pop culture knowledge and what is the pattern that's connecting all of these movies together? What are all the elements of this set have in common? And if you have some pop culture knowledge and know a little bit about movies, then the answer is fairly straightforward, and that is Harrison Ford is an actor in all of these. Harrison Ford is an American movie actor and was a star, or the star, of all of these guys, including the ones we don't see here. Now, which of these two sets? These sets are equal. They contain exactly the same elements, but it's a little clearer and a little bit more efficiently written in the second form than it is in the first form. Harrison Ford obviously is not in infinitely many movies, and so I don't mean that the set continues forever, but he's been in a lot of movies, and it would be really hard and awkward to list them all, and we're relying on people's pop culture knowledge to fill in the dot dot dot. So it's better to write this set here, not in terms of a roster of its elements, but rather in terms of the property that all those elements have in common. Right, So the set of all movies in which Harrison Ford was an actor, that's a much clearer way and shorter way to write this set than roster notation. We're going to shorthand this even further by introducing some notation here. So we're going to write this set, the movies in which Harrison Ford was an actor, kind of in two parts. I'm going to label this part one and part two over here. And notice that they're separated by a vertical bar. The first part of this uh, set here before the vertical bar, I'm going to state the universal set of things that I want to think about. In this case, I'm saying look at the set of movies that belong to M. Okay, Not just sci-fi movies, for example, although I think that's all the ones that I listed, but all movies, period. So that's the universal set. So I'm going to say the set of all things in the universal set this vertical bar, we're going to read it off as such that. So the set of all M in the set of movies, such that. And in part two, we're going to list the property that all these elements we want in our set have in common. So it's the set of all M in capital M, such that Harrison Ford was an actor in M, the movie in question. This is a way of notating a set called set builder notation because we are building the set not by listing the items that are in it but kind of ice trying to isolate the one property that they all have in common and building the set based on that property. So set builder notation we write a set in terms of its universal set and then such that and then list the property that all the elements of the set have in common. Let's look at a few more examples here. Mark Hamill was another actor in the movie Star Wars. Of course, he played Luke Skywalker. And so you might think, okay, what is the set of all M in the set of movies such that Mark Hamill was an actor in M? Uh, well, let me put the result up here. Let's try to list these out in roster notation. We're going to convert from set builder to roster. So what are this, what are this, what's the set of all movies where Mark Hamill, movies now, where Mark Hamill was an actor in M? Well, Star Wars was one. Uh, the sequel to Star Wars, which is The Empire Strikes Back, uh, Return of the Jedi, and you know what? You kind of run out of... Uh, <laughs> it's a little hard to list these out once you uh, uh, get past those three. I happen to have IMDB uh, up here and Mark Hamill's entry, and you know what? If you start scrolling down here, you don't see a lot of movies that he's in. Uh, I guess there's one that was called Back to the Sea, one that was called Airborne, a ton of video games and TV shows, uh, something called Minkow. Anyhow, we could keep listing these out is the point here. Uh, I'll put that last one here. Minkow? I don't know what that is. But anyhow, that would be a sort of a partial roster notation that would indicate this set. But isn't it a lot clearer said this way than this way? If I gave you this set and said, what do these sets have in common? They're, I wouldn't have any idea what they have in common. But this one really isolates what they all have in common, and that's how we build the set.
Looking at a couple of more mathematical examples, what is the set of all x in the real numbers such that x squared minus 4 is equal to 0? Let's list those in roster notation. So I'm looking for all real numbers x such that x squared minus 4 is 0. Uh, well, I can think of one of them. That would be 2. And there's another one, namely negative 2. And that's it. Okay, So that's easy to list out in roster notation. Uh, in this case, the roster notation is shorter, uh, although it may not highlight the uh, property so much that I'm thinking of. Uh, third example, what is the set of all integers? X is in the integers now. Notice the change in the universal set, such that x squared minus 4 is less than 0. The, the universal set makes a big difference here. If I didn't have the integers here, this would be a very large set. But since it... Uh, since I only want to think of x's that belong to the integers, there aren't too many of these that happen. Negative 1 would be one of those, because negative 1 squared minus 4 is less than 0. 0 would be another, and 1 would be a third one, and that's it. So we've converted from this set builder notation to that roster notation. Again, the roster notation for a set focuses on literally what's in the set. Set builder notation focuses on the property that all of the elements have in common. And these are just two different notations, and one notation may be more useful for us than another in a given setting. So it's important to be able to go back and forth between the two notations. There's another way to write a set in set builder notation as well that might make things a little bit easier to think about. So take a look at this double infinite set here. A uh, pattern continues on both sides. And you might stare at this for a little bit and think about what is the pattern here. It's a little hard to isolate. It's fairly easy to see once you look at this for a little bit that all these elements are different by five. Okay, they all have a difference of 5. I'll just go ahead and jump to the answer here to write it in set builder notation. These are all integers, so I might say the set of all n in the integers, such that the thing that all these elements have in common is that they can be written as 1 plus a multiple of 5. This is 1 plus 0. This is 1 plus 5. This is 1 plus 10. This is 1 plus 15. This is 1 plus negative 5. So all of these elements have this, this property in common, that they are integers such that n is equal to, let's say, 5k plus 1 for some other integer k. That would be uh, correct. It kind of reminds you of our definition of even numbers. It's kind of closely related. This is a little awkward, though, here. So another way that we can write this in set builder notation is to put the property first. Okay, Instead of specifying the universal set and then the property, we can specify the property and then the universal set. So we might also write this set like so. We can write this as the set of all numbers of the form 5k plus 1 such that k is an integer. And that is the same set as both of these, but it's the shortest and most efficient of all. So we can also write, and you will also see written, the property followed by the universal set that contains this variable here that's in the property. So let's end off with a concept check. Here is a set that's given in roster notation. I'd like to think about what it looks like in set builder notation, or could look like in set builder notation. So take a look at these five options and pause the video and select all of the ones that are correct. There could be more than one this time. And there are more than one this time, and that would be C and D. Let's focus in on D first. Uh, this set consists of all the powers of 2, the positive integer powers of 2. This is 2 to the first, 4 is 2 to the second, 8 is 2 to the third, 2 to the fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. So that's the set of all things that look like 2 to the k power, where k is a natural number. That rules out e, because I don't have any negative powers of 2 here. I don't see a 2 to the minus 1, a 2 to the minus 2, or any such thing. So the universal set really matters here. And uh, it's not a or b, because these aren't just multiples of 2. They are powers of 2. So there are some things that are in, uh, say, b that are not in the set up here, like the number 6 would be uh, an element of this set here, the set of all 2 to the n, where n is a natural number, but it is not an element of the set up here, so these two guys are not correct either. So that is a look at set builder notation. Thanks for watching.